Hello and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Our focus is on the North Central today, but first, our top stories. The total number of cholera cases in Lagos State has risen to 401, with Lagos Island, Koshofe and Etiosa recording the highest numbers. And that's according to a statement by the Special Advisor to the Governor on Health, Dr. Kemi Oguyemi, who says the death toll has risen to 21, an increase of six from the previously reported 15 fatalities. She revealed this today while providing an out update on the outbreak after the meeting with members of the State Public Health Emergency Operations Center. She adds that the Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Health and other sister agencies, is maintaining rigorous surveillance and monitoring of the situation and implementing planned programs as well as activities to curb the spread. The Inspector General of Police, Mr. Kayode Betokun, says the police barricaded local government secretariats in River State to prevent a breakdown of law and order. Fielding questions from journalists in Abuja on the sideline of a conference with commissioners of police and other senior officers, he says the police will continue to occupy the secretariat until a court of competent jurisdiction delivers judgment on the local government crisis in River State. Reacting to the allegations by members of the Police Service Commission unions on the recent recruitment of constables, Mr. Ebeto Kun says the management of the force will not allow incompetent people be recruited into the police force. Meanwhile, the governor of River State says the newly sworn in caretaker committee chairman can operate from anywhere if attempts to gain access to council secretariat breaches the peace in the state. He warned them not to become confrontational with the security operatives who have taken over the council secretariat as he does not want to be associated with violence. The governor also pointed out that the most important thing is that the caretaker chairman are now in charge of local government areas in the state. The establishment of the North Central Development Commission will enhance the development of the region and tackle the challenges affecting the people. The lawmaker representing Wamba, Akwamba and Nassau-Aigon Federal Constituency, Jeremiah Umaru, made the remark during the empowerment of 250 constituents from the Northern Zone. Mr. Umaru, who is the sponsor of the North Central Development Commission bill alongside 50 members, is also pushing for an additional constituency in the zone. Our correspondent, Halima Gayam, has this report. Stakeholders and the people of Wamba, Akwanga, and Nasarawa Egon constituency of Nasarawa Northern Zone are in Susumbaki community of Wamba local government area. As 250 vulnerable people from 35 wards in the zone are empowered with refrigerators, sewing, and grinding machines. This is the first presentation. The lawmaker representing the zone, Jeremiah Umaru, is distributing these items without consideration for political leanings as he marks one year in office. Besides sponsoring the North Central Development Commission bill, he is also pushing for the creation of an additional federal constituency for the people of Nasarawa Egon. What matters is those who are coming behind me, we need to create an avenue, a platform for them to strive. And today, to the glory of God, the North Central Development Commission bill has passed out reading in the House of Reps. I sponsor it. And that bill was co-sponsored by the 50 House of Reps members from the North Central. The idea is we want more development. We want more projects for our people. The beneficiaries who appreciate the gesture say it will enable them care for their families. I will use it to grant my kunu, especially my wife, she, she used to make kunu for selling and other people around the village. Yes. Like now they gave me engine. I will use this grinding machine to uh, grind some small, small things that they will bring to me so that I will use the, that money 
to take care of my family. JJ Umaru will give me so in keke so that I should be my, I should work as a woman, so that I should help my children with my family. As the economic hardship continues to bite, Nasarawa stakeholders are complementing efforts of the federal government to empower vulnerable individuals to overcome the challenges. Ali Magayam, Channel Television News. The Plateau State Government has re-emphasized its commitment to have a befitting metropolis devoid of chaotic vehicular traffic, indiscriminate buildings and illegal trading activities. To achieve this, the Just Metropolitan Development Board has been mandated to execute the order which is to be implemented within the Just Buruku Metropolis under the Greater Just Master Plan. In continuation of the enforcement of Order 003, which is to control illegal erection of buildings, traffic congestion and curb trading activities within the Joss Metropolis, members of the tax force have been going around to ensure compliance with the directives. The general manager, Joss Metropolitan Development Board, Hart Bankard, led the supervising team across major streets in Joss, where illegal structures obstructing the right-of-way were pulled down to facilitate easy access for traders and vehicles. His Excellency was very clear when he highlighted urban renewal as part of the major policy trust of this government. And part of urban renewal is having to resuscitate the old city back to its initial state of what it was. As we've gone around now, you've seen that we're trying to demarcate the setbacks and then clear our drainages. Where they've collapsed, we're going to have to construct new ones. And then where the roads are filled, we'll try to see whether we can convince the government so that it will be captured in the budget for those things to be done. Although the exercise was hit free in just north area of terminals and Delimi, where traders and residents complied with the directives, it was a different story in just south, where hoodlums attacked the team, leading to destruction of properties within the Buruku market area. The miscreants or the youth came in numbers to resist the effort, stoning the tax force. Of course, the tax force will have to defend themselves. But thank God they did not fire at the youths. And then sounds were coming of gone. I don't know whether the miscreant has gone, which I want to believe they do. Uh, in all clarity of terms, without mixing of words, before the security now retaliated. And then upon that, the next thing, we locked ourselves inside the shops and they threatened to break into the shop. In their clear terms, they say, Kafito, Arna Zamukesheka, that's come out and infidel, we will kill you. They knock and then one of them said, I Suruga Sungudu, literally translated as they have left already. And then they con co continued with what they were doing. And to the glory of God, I was there with my two kids, my staff and others. And then one of, now said, one of them now said, let's buckle the shop and see whether the infidel is inside. One of them said, allow them, they will roast inside from the smoke that is coming from the burnt cars. My car, my wife's car, four other cars, we are actually uh, burned. Begin to burn people's car, pursuing people, following people with, they want to kill people. We are not happy with what happened. So we are praying that the government should interview, intervene on this matters. To restore normalcy to the affected area, personnel from Operation Safe Haven, led by the commander, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar visited the scene to interact with residents on the need to avoid confrontation with security agencies and government functionaries. Those youths that have born those vehicles are youths from your communities. They are your children. A total of six vehicles just got born like that. So please go back and talk to yourselves. I'm not no further violence. The Plateau State Government has expressed commitments that the exercise will continue until all shanties and illegal structures are brought down to ensure sustainable development in the state. The Benue State Assets Commission of Inquiry, set up by Governor Hyson Alia to investigate all these and sale of government assets, 
from May 2015 till May 2023, have received 30 memoranda and processes filed by individuals and organizations. The chairman of the Commission of Inquiry, Justice Paul Apollos, who disclosed this at the inaugural sitting in Makodi, the state capital, called on members of the public with any useful information on any of the sole public assets to come forward to help in the investigation. Members of the Benue State Commission of Inquiry into the sale and lease of state-owned assets and markets arrive court six for the inaugural sit-in. The chairman reveals that 30 memoranda have been received which allegedly detail sale and lease of state-owned companies by the last administration between 2015 and 2023. The commission has so far received a total of 30 memoranda and submissions from the public as well as ministries and extra ministerial departments. The importance of the general public in partnering with the commission in executing its mandate cannot be overemphasized as the assignment cannot be complete without the inputs from the general public. The Commission outlines how it will conduct its proceedings, which will include calling members of the public to volunteer information. Speaking on the sidelines of the sit-in, the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in the state, Mr. Fidelis Simyim, says the premises previously known to be government-owned companies have been converted to private use and the commission is instituted to probe the legality or otherwise of their ownership. The intent and purpose of this commission is to look into government properties that have been carted away by private individuals. Some of the government properties that we know that these places where the properties were government properties. Now you go out there, you see private individuals have built on the places. It is the interest of the governor of Benue State, His Excellency, Reverend Father Dr. Heisen, you remember earlier that whatever belongs to Benue State government should remain a Benue State government property. So this commission is put together to do their work, look into these issues. Some of the government properties have been leased out. Some of them you can't even define the term of the you can't even define the terms. On the part of the MBA, the probe process must be supported by all stakeholders, including lawyers who will represent any party in the process to ensure justice to the state. Our view is that anyone that is caught up or involved in any such dealing should come and explain whatever happened. If they are correct or it was legally done, they go away. If not, then the law should take its course. We are assuring the members of the public as well as the commission that you have the absolute uh, support and cooperation of the lawyers and MBA McCordy branch. The commission also informs parties who are already invited to answer questions with regards to the ownership of some of the state-owned assets to prepare to enter appearance once they are scheduled as a panel rises for the day. Coming up on the program, we'll tell you about the Kogi State Government's plans to improve education in the state. Join us again. Welcome back. In an effort to improve the quality of learning at the basic education level, the Kogi State Government, through the Renewed Hope Initiative Project, has distributed 50,000 exercise books to primary schools across the state. During the official flag off ceremony, the Commissioner for Education, Mr. Wemi Jones, described education as the bedrock of any nation's development, noting that it has been on the front burner of the Kogi State Government's five areas of focus. He promised that the Governor Ododo-led administration would continue to do more to meet the educational needs of Kogi children through its free education policy at the primary and secondary school levels. So thank you so much for coming around.
Seated at the glass hall of the government house in Lokoja, the Kogi State capital, are pupils and teachers from basic education schools in the state. Government officials joined the special guest, Mrs. Safina Tododo, to distribute notebooks to pupils across the state, a gesture from the wife of the president, Mrs. Oluremi Tinubu. The man saddled with the responsibility of education in the state gives assurances that the Kogi State government's free education system is on, warning the head of schools to stop charging people or face the consequences. I'd like to say education remains free in Kogi State under the government. Of under the government of His Excellency Alhaji Usman Ododo, we are paying for WAEC. We are going to pay for NESCO next year. We have paid for JAM. We are paying for BC, that's the junior WAEC. We are paying for common entrance. We are paying for basic six. We are also paying for NAPTEP. This is because we believe very strongly that the palliative we are giving in education is the, va the palliative that we outlive us. Other programs are in the works in sister ministries to identify talented pupils that will be nurtured in areas of science and technology. The wife of Kogi State Governor Safinat Ododo commends Nigeria's First Lady for her passion to ensure quality education at the basic level, noting that the initiative remains an inspiration worthy of emulation. I would like to express our sincere appreciation to Her Excellency for her visionary leadership and dedication to education. Her Excellency's passion for her ensuring quality education for all is truly, is truly commendable and serve as an inspiration to all of us. To the students who benefit from these exercise books, I urge you to take advantage of opportunity. After which she flags off the distribution exercise. behind the distribution of educational materials is to reduce the burden on parents. All right. um, just carry a bottle. This costs more about the education sector in Kogi State. We're being joined by the Commissioner for Education, Mr. Wemi Jones. A pleasure having you with us on the program. Mr. Jones, can you kindly unmute so that we can hear you? Okay, we'll try and re-establish contact with Mr. Jones and hope he unmutes his audio so that we can continue the conversation. To other stories now, the federal government and Space Exploration and Research Agency, SARA, have agreed on a collaborative effort to advance human space flight capabilities. In a landmark event in the nation's capital, Abuja, the MOU was signed between the National Space Research and Development Agency, NASRA, and SARA, highlighting a major milestone for the nation's airspace aspiration, including sending a Nigerian into space. The Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, Mr. Uche Naji, is optimistic that the partnership will accelerate technological advancement and inspire a new generation. Our correspondent, Sunist Nathaniel, has this report. This is part of efforts of the federal government to advance its human spaceflight capabilities. 
International Space Research and Development Agency, NASDAQ, is partnering with the United States-based Space Exploration and Research Agency to open the doors to human space flight missions involving Nigerians. We have signed MOU today with the CIRA, that is a um, space exploration research agency f from America. They are, they are covering us 100% financially. So Nigeria is not spending a dime, you know. So you can see we are blessed <laughs> because at this time we are looking for money. You know, some people are coming, CIRA are coming to say, let us take the bills. Some major highlights of the agreement include development of critical technologies and infrastructure required for human missions beyond Earth, as well as sending a Nigerian into space. This collaboration is not coming cash in hand. The support we receive from European Commission is 2.7 million euros towards the artificial intelligence, robotics, and big data for our agricultural value chain aspect. But this human space flight is coming as one of those aspects of our deep space exploration. Like my Honorable Minister has mentioned, there are so many spin-offs that comes from this uh, ad adventure. And we believe there are so many areas of STEM research will be open for Nigerians. A major component in this agreement is the democratization of space and as such, Nigerians will have a say in choosing the civilian who will eventually become the first Nigerian to enter space. Sunes Nathaniel, reporting for Channel Television News. A team from the World Bank and Agroclimatic agro Resilience in Semi-Arid Landscape has visited Kwara State with the primary aim of improving its ecological condition. With a $700 million loan to be invested in the 19 northern states, the fund will be used to address key climatic issues of water resources, environment and agriculture. Hmm? The Agroclimatic Resilience in Semi-Arid Landscape is a World Bank-funded project that seeks to address ecological issues. With a $700 million loan from the World Bank, the 19 Northern States and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, will now have access to the fund to address key climatic issues and challenges in the Ministries of Water Resources, Environment and Agriculture. The team visits some of the projects where the Kwara State Government requires intervention, including the waterworks in Ilori, the state capital. The state, the current state of the equipment we saw, are not only dilapidated, they are worn out and outdated. And for that reason and many more, we are in support of government proposition to invest in revitalizing this for this dam for the purposes of providing portable drinking water, which is essential for our lives. The ongoing Eruda waterway channelization is also assessed and consideration is given on how to support fish farmers along the riverbank. Essentially to address the poverty situation of our poor people who are resident in rural areas and communities. These lands are supposed to be recovered. The degraded landscape are supposed to be recovered for it to become fertile to service what predominantly is the mainstay of our people, agriculture. So that's where you have Minister of Agriculture. The project is anchored on three pillars, dry land management, climate smart agricultural activities, and policies that strengthen institutions in order to outlive the actors. That's it on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinlami.